Hey guys, Matt from Crank Engineering. One thing I'd love to have in my shop for generally hammering on is an anvil. Big problem I've got is anvils here in Australia are hideously expensive, whether they're new or used, around about $10 a kilo, which for a 50 kilo anvil is $500. Now I don't want to spend $500 on an anvil, but I found a really cool video on YouTube where a guy built a very functional anvil out of some railway track and some bar stock. The problem was I had to reverse engineer what he'd done in the video to understand how he built it and reproduce that myself. So I'm gonna go through that process in the video now showing you how I reverse engineered the anvil he'd made and hopefully you can pick up a few things too. Okay, here's a bit of a snippet of the video that I found on YouTube. If you're interested in fabricating an anvil and you've got a welding machine and a grinder, you can pretty much do this at home. So go check it out from the links around the video. And this is the anvil that I'm basing my design on. Okay, I took a screenshot from the video just as a reference. And the first thing I did was take a cardboard folder and trace around the railway track so I had a end view template of the track itself so obviously you're going to be working with whatever piece of track you can find and this is the piece that I had and I've chopped it in half to make two pieces the same length so really all I'm trying to do now is reproduce the track profile and what was done in a video was they were butted together and trimmed off where I'm marking it now and weld it together in that position. So the ends were, edges were cut off and then down the centre we've needed to put in a bevel because we're going to weld that together we're going to fill that with weld. Okay from this point you can work out what size bar stock needs to go in as the horn and on my case I'd measured up between 60 and 80 millimetres and I'd gone down to my local scrap metal supplier and they had a piece of two and a half inch which is about 63 millimetre hydraulic cylinder rod so I'm using that. Next thing I wanted to do was draw a side view and normally I would do this on paper but it's a lot easier to see on a whiteboard so I've just measured up the length of the track or the pieces of track I've got and I'm just drawing a side profile where all the features on the track would be seen. So hopefully this makes sense as I'm drawing it out. So all we're looking at is a side profile of the track. So it goes like that. And now I'm working out how am I going to put this thing together based on the drawing that or the screenshot I've taken. So I'd make an arbitrary decision to make the length of the base 200 millimeters and if you make it too short it won't be stable enough if you make it too long well you won't have enough room at the back so that uh, feature I'm putting in there is a hardy hole which is just a square hole on the top of the anvil which is used for uh, securing other tools that you might want to fit to the anvil and it really needs to line up with the back of the base so that's why I put it in that particular location and what I'm doing now is figuring out where the horn is going to go and how long it should be. So these dotted lines indicate the part of the horn that's hidden behind the steel. So if I make it that length, then the back of the horn supports the back of the hardy hole in between the railway tracks itself. Now in the video, if you watch it, you'll see that the guy uses a chunk of steel on the base. And the reason you have to do that is because the bottom of those or the top of those railway tracks when you put them upside down they're not level so a steel plate welded to the bottom will help support it. I've decided arbitrarily to make that horn 120 millimeters long and those little dashed lines at the back are just indicating some blocks of steel that I'll have to use to plug up some holes. So that's the general idea of what we're trying to do and in the next video we'll get cutting and welding.